Ciro Proces start with uh, a potato, <coughs> essentially any kind of convex potato, so this potato here that is not convex and this potato that is not here that is not convex, you throw them away. <laughs> <laughs> so you have potatoes of the same, convex. So a possible way of consuming meat, you take your ruler, you pick the potato, you put it in a random position, whatever random means. So and then you just uh, measure the length between the height and the thin. So essentially here will be around uh, 8 centimeters. Or you do like this and then it will be like 4 centimeters. Or the bending. So this is you measure at random. You put the potato at random and you measure the highest point uh, to the distance to the, not distance, but height to the lowest point. So this is very small thematic. This one. Put the potato on the potato on the position. So you have here you will paint the <coughs> potato put in a random position and two means you have. sense. Uh, it does it relate to the usual measures of a potato, so what is the volume or what is the surface area of the potato, so is there any relationship between that or if not. So this is the first thing that one wants to, to make is does this make sense in a way that you can call any number related to this quantity the uh, length of a potato. Okay, so this will be the random variable. So we are so now we will start. So the first thing is evaluation. Okay. So essentially, if you take the usual uh, measure definition of you measure something, you will get a very big. Uh, you will get essentially this theorem of Lebesgue that says to you, okay, you have only volume, so any other kind of measure of things uh, will be completely gone. So one has to work with this called valuation, which is a kind of finite uh, generalization of measures. Okay, so here the, the fundamental idea of a measure is you have these uh, usual actions of measure theory, that if you have a disjoint union, then the measure of the disjoint union is the addition of the, of the measures of each part. But uh, that is not the part that will be useful for this uh, generalization. So the first thing we start with something that we can measure. We don't know. Uh, so we have a so we have a set. Here we have a favorite uh, family of sets. So let's call it uh, P. That is not P. So that name. So let's call it A. That is contained here. As usual, we want it to be close and. Uh, Unions and intersections, and we will make the point that we tell about only about the finite world. So we don't care if we do infinite or not, this is not something. So this is the technical. So we have somewhere we will want to measure subsets, which is the usual thing that you do. Then you have the usual way where you have a certain family of success that is well behaved in a certain way. And you have this finiteness of unions and intersections. And then evaluation, what that generalizes is this standard property that if you have the measure of a union, 
This is usually the, the traditional thing of tail with this in one part, tail with this in the other part, and in the part that is in the, in the intersection. So this will be what we will call evaluation. So this will be the defining property. Here a little the technical detail. As you will see, we will not define evaluations uh, directly on these families of subset that are close under union and close under intersections. So we will usually have a family G that is close under intersections. Then we will consider the family tilde, G tilde, which is essentially And once we have this kind of family, one question is, okay, does evaluation mu extend to e? Essentially, this is the usual question. So you have a family of subset, you have a family that you know that is union of certain basic subsets, and you care about if you can extend it really to the define it only in the basic subsets and then extend it. Here the question will be uh, yes, if I only if. Said that when you make the union is still basic, then the usual formula minus one. But the important thing is that <coughs> we will be just referring from now on to families that are close under intersections without caring about the unions. Because as long as this inclusion exclusion uh, property holds, then you can extend it to unions. It is essentially this property, but generally sized to arbitrary unions. This is how it will look. So you should you take one, then you get the intersection of two, then you add the intersection of three, then you add the intersection of four patterns, and so on and so on. Okay. So one is this model that's clear. Let's go with the first example valuations. It will be valuations So we have a parallel top. So for whoever doesn't know what it is, this is something of the form A plus intersection of L. So it's something like this, essentially a box that you have move around. And here one can uh, one half the usual definition. So you can have the new end of this box. That will just be taking the, the product of all these guys. So, this is uh, the volume, the usual volume of the box. 
And then uh, here is what one does is generalize this in a way using certain algebra that is for a new k p. What you take is you consider all possible k subsets of this guy. So essentially, s k and s is subset of the usual dimension, and then you just make addition. So in some ways, if you have a three-dimensional box, you will do the usual. It will be the sorry, p. This is Volume of P is equal to one half of the surface of P and then move on P. So if you define the perimeter of P as adding all the lengths of all possible things, you will have uh, this will be like uh, one fourth of the perimeter of P. So essentially this you know, size the uh, higher ones and the idea is take all the smaller boxes that you can find of the appropriate dimension so this k thing can be defined and once you have taken them they make the addition of all these possible choices. Okay. So one can ask, okay, these uh, are uh, quite arbitrary and one of the main questions that one can make is, okay, there is something else. So the first observation about this new case is so observation one is that UK lambda P is just lambda to the K K. So this is homogeneous. Also the observation two will be that this guy is continuous. So if you have continuous and here will be continuous. with respect to the out of distance. So the important thing is to realize that this uh, continuity is with respect to the set of parallelotopes and not the set of unions of parallelotopes. This will be very to avoid confusion. I will not enter in this uh, house of uh, distance. So it means that if two parallel tubes are similar in length, then the, the measure has to be uh, similar. So once you have uh, this guy and this guy, seems like pretty useful properties, and then one group can prove the theorem that is like, suppose this is an equation that is continuous, and the other thing is invariant. And the translations and uh, access to the So you have, uh, you have your box and you want evaluation that is continuous. So if you deform the box, increase the length, increase the length, the evaluation varies continuously. And then you want that if you use make a tunes of 90 degrees of the box, it will still have the same value. So this is the two properties that you ask. And then here the uniqueness uh, theorem says you, then mu will be just AI from 0 to n. For some AI reals. So essentially. This theorem is saying you that if you want some continuity, so that is something that you expect when you measure, that if you vary a little your box, you don't get a gap in the measure of what are measuring. And if you do 90 degrees the boxes and so on, essentially all ways that you have of measuring is just a linear combinations of these of these things defined here. Okay, so this is the parallel case, it's not the most Interesting case, but it's the simplest case that you can see these uh, intrinsic volumes. So now we pass to a more interesting case. And this more interesting case is instead of being here, so now. Okay, yeah. So 
now we pass to KN. So KN will be convex compact subsets of Rn in a way more complicated to which is done in the case of parallel tubes, you can define this new k that goes from here to here that are now ratios such that new k is convex continuous. Sends you convex sets to the mirror suit, this is still continuous, so still you have some nice variability and also is continuous. So essentially, you put here lambda, you get this nice So one can extend it, and when you restrict them to parallel topes, you get again the same thing as in the case of parallel topes. So for the case of the length, you get all possible directions, the addition of those lengths. In the other case, uh, you get the half of the surface area, and so on. So this is essentially the beginning of this thing. And here you get, uh, okay, so this is something that is uh, more or less, this condition will be if you want to define something, you will expect it to satisfy this. And this is essentially the same theorem that one gets here. So now instead of saying this evaluation is continuous, I have to say this is evaluation of uh, KN. And then the second, the second point is invariant, and now it's used Euclidean moment. So this means symmetries, and then you get exactly the same extension. When the evaluation will be use a real linear combination of these guys. So essentially, this theorem, it's not the same. It's just, it is, theorem. So you know, these things here, which are the intrinsic volumes that we know how they look for uh, you know how they look for for parallel topes that is essentially this uh, weird thing of just multiply all the lengths of k and then make the addition essentially how we get there and saying okay if you pass to this generalization of mean source in Rn and you restrict yourself to convex sets then the only things that will appear as long as you ask for continuity, which is a pretty normal thing when you measure things, you don't want arbitrary jumps. Essentially saying you okay, this is the only thing that you will get up to linear combination. But of course this uh, not always gives a clear idea of okay, we know that this is an intrinsic volume. So here there can be like several questions. Uh, one of them is if you realize, um, if I will be super technically correct, I will have here to put a super scripts that is an M in order to indicate that this depends on the dimension of the ambient space. Uh, I don't put this because uh, these are independent of the ambient space. So this will be the observation of this more theorem. So in your case, lengthy calculation in order to show really that the thing that we have to find one make the construction in some other way and then one have to check that this just agree with the definition for parallelotopes and it's not uh, trivial to do it 
But the thing is, once you have this uh, new case independent of the ambient space, this also justifies this intrinsic here, because essentially it's saying that it's something intrinsic of the convex body. It's not something that depends on where this convex body is lying. You can go and take n to be large enough, but still mu1 will be the same value, mu2 will be the same value, mu3 will be the same value. So this is important. And once we have this, okay. We have the this hardware fair saying this is unique, but of course from here one still we have the original question, and still it's not easy to visualize this new why what they are. So the usual way of doing this, how to visualize this. is one important Theorem by Steiner. So this is Steiner's formula, says to you, okay? So take the volume, no nothing fancy, you take your convex uh, body, your favorite uh, convex convex set, and now you make the addition. So in this case, let's consider this guy, the triangle, and in this case, let's consider the square. So here we are just putting this all around. Essentially, you have the volume of the original guy, then for each one of these lengths, you get r times this length, and then you get a constant. This guy is used the, ball, the usual volume of the ball, and here this is used the usual volume of the disc, and this is again this thing. So if this will be, this will be r times r. and this will be one fourth of p r square here something similar depending on this length so essentially here we get something like l square or l tensor plus this i r square this is right okay so now the thing is again how this will be general this is essentially Steiner formula says to you, okay, this is an size in the obvious way, and there will be appearing some coefficients that are the uh, intrinsic volumes that we introduced before, so this new AK. Then it will appear in this m minus i, where uh, sure this is just the volume. is the usual volume of the car dimensional ball and then you get this r uh, times to the r There is a natural appearance of these intrinsic volumes, and this helps a lot to visualize intrinsic volumes because it helps to understand that this mu i is like the, the correspondence of this e dimensional part of the convex body that it took part in this, in this Minkowski sum. Now, coming up to the original question, so which is the length?
So one uh, we say, so one with the potential in an arbitrary position. arbitrary position, so this, and then use measure the distance, the height from the top to the bottom. So once we have this, and then one obtains something that can be really uh, general size, but on one with the expectation of this, then on this. say that the length of a potato coordinate the intrinsic volume is two times the diameter of a potato if the constant is right so that's all any questions for Jose? Thank you. 